Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and our special guest tonight is Paul Castro Jr., who just dragged himself out from New York to join us here in L.A. Just to yes. be on the show. Just, exactly. just to be on our show. If you got any questions for him or some tech questions for George and I, send them into the chat room, primarily on Facebook, yep. because the other one's going away. <laughs> it's a whole other story. Anyway, Paul Castro Jr., your questions, our questions, all sorts of voiceover stuff coming up right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. There we go. Oh, we got a crowd tonight. We For hoisting. once. Yeah. Guys, you guys could be here in the studio if you wanted to. Just let us know if you're in the greater Los Angeles area. And you could see this show being done live. You could laugh at how small this place really is. Really? <laughs> we fit it all in here. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So another exciting week in Hollywood. The Oscars are gone, so we'll stop seeing all the billboards and the stuff on the on the buses. Quite a and... shocking result, I'd have to I say. Know. Now I have to go see Parasite. That's going to have a massive bump to their viewership, right? I... Thousands, millions of people, just that movie just popped up on their radar. I know. So good for them. Yeah, everybody was talking about how good it was. I thought 1917 was going to win, but. You know, this is called Hollywood talk. Well, I saw uh, <laughs> I, the night before the Oscars, I went and saw Ford versus Ferrari. Finally, one of the I want I want to go see that. Was, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. Oh, OK. Well, now I know I have to see. Yeah. It. They actually had to redub the sound of all the cars. Really? Because you're seeing what look like the real cars. Right. And they certainly drive like the real cars. But the engines in them are like modern engines. Right. So they had to go get sound. They had to source sounds of the original old engines. Right. Rev, you know, do all that, then redub all that back and in. And won an Oscar for doing it. They should have. They did. And they, and they did. They yeah. did for best sound Freaking mixing. Awesome. It was oh. awesome. All right. Well, speaking of Hollywood, uh, it's time to introduce our guest for tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, a young man I met a couple weeks ago uh, because I worked on his studio, and he's got a great story because he's a successful actor, and he's made the decision to come out here to L.A. to seek his fortune. You know, it's so right over there. It's, it's, actually, that, it's, it's in the that, next backyard, it's actually. Like Phillips Radio. Anyway, let's welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop, Paul Castro Jr. Paul, come on up here. Thank you. All you right. are too kind. Oh no, we're 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 real kind. Okay. We're kind of something. <laughs> we're not exactly sure what, but anyway, yeah. welcome to the show. I, clearly, you've watched us before, so yes. All right. Well, it's good to know. So uh, here you are. Now, living here in, in Los Angeles, 
Uh, but tell us about yourself. You're originally from Brooklyn. Yes. Uh, I grew up in Brooklyn till I was like sl- uh, seven, then family moved to Jersey, as most people from uh, Brooklyn do. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> then I came back to New York for school, uh, for college. So went to NYU, and then I've been oh, there. Oh, NYU. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the Tisch School of the Arts, yeah. as they call it. And I was there for almost... I feel like it's eight years, almost nine years. I lived in New York since yeah. then, and yeah, it's been uh, like in Lower Manhattan or all over. I lived oh, yeah. in Chinatown, Soho. I mostly lived in Harlem. I, li- I lived on one twenty fifth, then moved to one thirty fifth, then to one forty fifth, and I was either going to Washington Heights or to L A. So oh, we, okay, we chose so way uptown. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. That's cool. So you're you you've been doing acting on stage on screen. Tell us some of the stuff you've been working on. And yeah, that you've done. I've well, I've TV wise been on shows like uh, Limitless and Blue Bloods, Law and Order. Uh, I was yeah. Well, if you live in New York, yeah, it's You've like been on this, Law and Order. you have to well, have been on, you have to have been on Law and Order. Yes, I was on Law and Order, but they cut my character sto- that my character out because I had like two lines, so they cut oh, me out of that. But yeah. I was still on it, and I still get the residuals from it, so it's still Law and Order in my book. Uh, good, good. So I did that bunch of films like uh, the Skeleton Twins with Bill Hader and Kristen, which Wing. was. A, fair, a fairly, uh, you know, a critically acclaimed film. Oh, it's an amazing film. It's I was so lucky to, to have such a like, small part in it, but they're amazing, and the film is just them at their best. I feel like because they get to not only be funny but uh, show off their chops, mm-hmm. and they they do have great chops, Kristen and Bill, and Ty Burrell too as well. Yeah, um, uh, and Luke Wilson. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, what got you into acting? I mean, so it's um, I, the way I got into acting was kind of backwards, I think, to the way most people do. Is I loved video games and anime and all the cartoons, and I was in college studying pre med, and I was like, "This is miserable. There's no way I can spend my life doing doing biology and chemistry." And so I joined like a, a an improv. A group uh, just making YouTube videos and I was like oh wait a second I can do this and have fun and potentially make money at it so yeah. I started doing that got involved in the theater and um, because I, w- I wanted to do the uh, anime and all that stuff I joined like a, a one-on-one acting class they had there like for non-majors and um, Bill Timoney knew my, who does a lot of voices on Pokemon and uh, a lot of other amazing things. I got in touch with him. He's like, you got to learn how to act first. You can't just get into voice acting if you don't know how to act. But you were doing theater and stuff. Well, after his uh, 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 advice to Ah. get involved in the theater um, after the improv group. And so I was doing acting training and I was like, I actually kind of like doing this. Mm -hmm. Applied to NYU, said if I got in, I'll take it seriously. I got in miraculously and then it just kind of steamrolled from there doing theater and on camera and tv and commercials and i came backwards to doing voiceover a little later because i it just kept being a thing that i was booking commercially Mm -hmm. my commercial agents are like you just keep booking and i was working with like nickelodeon a ton which i still do and i was like what type of work are you doing with nick i did the pro well uh i done some of their cartoons i did this one sh- show called nell the princess knight i do a, ma- a large portion of their uh youtube content so like videos like the history of spongebob like they're like mm, uh the lip dubs that they do for all their shows and i do the promos for nick sports hmm. is that um, the company house like when you start booking work in there they start hey we could fit him over here we yes fit him in over there yeah kind of thing. It's it's yeah. very um, integral to all the the departments that they do that with the yeah. uh, the casting team over there is they've been great to me and yeah. they like to use the same people. It's just you oh. have to hope that what you're doing uh, sticks around because right. like I was doing stuff and then those shows got canceled and I'm like all right well yeah. <laughs> can we get another show yeah. yeah but you were you were in New York doing this yeah that's this is all in New York yeah so you were working for Nickelodeon. And all this other stuff, and you're doing that out of your studio in New York. And well, starting off, I didn't. I, so my studio, which I think I've seen you a picture of, but it's it was well, this my, is your new studio. This is my new studio now yeah, here, yeah, right. but it was in my closet basically. And uh, but I was going into uh, production studios or uh, uh, studios in New York, all over uh, to have me record there uh, mm-hmm. offsite. Ah, yeah. Okay. So uh, what made you decide it was time to? Pick up stakes, stakes from the from the Empire State. Although you were actually you were in the Garden State, uh, you were yeah. in Jersey. Yes. So uh, 
What made you decide to come out here? And what were what were some of the determining factors? A lot of our audience are people who are like, I want to come to L.A. Yeah. And uh, is it something they should do? And when is the right time to do it? At least when was it for you? Yeah. I mean, I know so many people who just kind of pack up their bags and come here. And then they wind up staying for a year and then going back. Around and going back. Because they, they didn't really from. have a plan. Right. And there wasn't... Um, it. This can be, as I know, an unforgiving city if you don't have your ducks in a row. So I've been trying to come here for probably three years, I would say. Like I said, me and my girlfriend said, we're going to come to L.A., and then work for me just kept coming up and we're trying to save up money and uh, really kind of figure out stability in some way financially. So I was producing a movie in New York and I was like, all right, I'm going to finish this out and then we'll move. And that was supposed to be June. And then another job came up. I'm like, all right, August. And then I was like, okay, wait. Then something else came up and it wound up being we got out of our place in New York in uh, December. We spent that month in Jersey with family and then we moved. And the reason we did it for me primarily was voiceover. I mean, obviously I'm doing on camera stuff too, but um, if you want to do at a high level, because New York is great commercially, it is still, I would say the Mecca of commercial voiceover. Mm. Um, a lot of most animation that's union video games, interactive mocap, uh, that's here yeah, from everything. Here in LA, yeah. yeah, so that was the biggest incentive for me. I knew I was still doing commercials in New York. I could carry a lot of that stuff over, but I wanted to do more animation video games and interactive. I just knew that that's what my, my passion was, like my five-year plan of where I see my career going, and I can still do on camera and everything else I'm doing. Yeah, if you want to do Broadway, stay in, in New York. I was going to say, you didn't feel like you were taking a, a massive risk losing client connections. <sighs> It didn't, Small, it didn't. some things were, I guess some things were yeah, it was, put at a risk. Or yes. It was It was tricky because I think I had a lot of insecurity as it was getting closer. I'm like, what did I do? What am I doing here? Like, <laughs> yeah. I had to buy a car and do all this. Yeah. It costs a lot of mon money to move here. Yeah. And that's what I think people don't realize is if you don't have a, a, a bank. You've got to have the resources in order to, to come here and do it. I'm mean, Just yes. to get into voiceover. You've got to have resources. Otherwise yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be living on ramen noodles and, you know. Ketchup. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> and that's why I came here a month beforehand. I came here, here, I came out here December 4th for two weeks, and I met with all the agents that I knew that I could get meetings with out here, because I have New York rep, mm -hmm. and I just knew that I wanted to be taken care of in um, L.A., and now I'm working with Dean Panera, who's been amazing thus far. Um, but I took all my meetings, and I said, I want to see what happens before I make that huge commitment and then finding a place too, finding a place I could build my studio in. I, there was yeah. like all these conditions I had to meet in yeah. order to make this work out. And um, if I didn't have the, the money to do that, there's just, you know, I'd be living in my car. <laughs> yeah. Take note of that. Yeah. Uh, imp important to note. Our guest right now is Paul Castro Jr. Who's talking to us about his transition out here to LA. If you have a question for him, you can throw it in our Facebook chat room and, Jeff Holman is running our chat room tonight, so he'll be greeting you there and ask your question of Paul, and uh, we'll get to it in just a little bit. So you packed up the car. Yep. And your cats. Four cats. And your girlfriend. Oh yep. Who had the priority? Yeah. Uh, well, the, the cats or the, girl, the girlfriend, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, she, she had to go into the, the cat, cat crates, and the cats got the front seat. No. It was uh, four cats just running rampant all in the, the car. Yeah. yeah. And how long did it take you to get out of here? We so, I don't recommend doing this at all. <laughs> it sounds really bad. It was, it was a nightmare. Uh, we did it in four days. We stopped uh, three times, and we, we had like a, a pseudo trip in Sedona, which was like just a three hour hike that we did. Right. Um, left the cats in the car? Or we got an Airbnb and we oh, just left okay. them there. So okay. that's the only way that worked out. Yeah. But I don't recommend doing that. If you're going to go cross country, take your time. Don't get four cats. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. Oh it, my God. It was a nightmare. Yeah. We did it with two dogs. Oh. It took 10 days and stayed at hotels that were friendly to dogs. Good. Yeah. Which was nice. Yeah. And, and we got to see a lot of America and took our time. And, yeah. But you were in a hurry to get out here. So. I was. I felt like every second I was not in L.A., it's like, this is money wasted. Yeah. So, yeah. but it was good. It was good. I I think the trip cross country was uh, like shedding the, the New York skin and rebirthing in L.A. kind of, even though I'm still going back to New York. So. Well, yeah. But no, but it, it, it's like 
you're shutting the door behind you. Yes. You know, we decided like, in, you know, the house closed. We stuff was piled up on the front lawn and we're like, let's go. Yeah. We said goodbye to our friends. We got in the car, boom, we were out of there. And it was like, see ya. Yeah. It's, and it was, it's a transition. It's, you know, I'm making a shift in my life. So that was probably a hard thing to do. And, uh, but once you got here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, uh, like 70 degrees and New York, it was raining and 20 degrees. So I said, it's so worth it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even for this alone. You'll never miss it. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, I don't, I, after being in New York for that long, I'm like, what are, I, I mean, actually, I guess it makes sense if you think. I'm going to beat myself up in New York until I have no more uh, uh, pride or in humility. I'm right. just going to be completely raw and at my lowest. And then come to L.A., you'll have perspective and you won't be jaded. Well, there you go. <laughs> you miss the smell of slightly burned hot dogs, cigarettes, piss, and everything. You kind of walk around 42nd and Broadway. Absolutely. Oh, you can get that not. here, You can get too. that here for sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Let me know where to go. Just walk under any viaduct <laughs> here and you, you can get that sort of thing. So did you do any recording while you were on the road? I, d I had auditions I had to do. You, for how, sure. did you, how did you do that? Uh, the my Sennheiser MKH 416, and uh, we just call it a 416. You don't have to throw the MKH. In Sennheiser, no. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, the 416 and my audience. I do one for my laptop and in the car. Uh, Great place to do it. Yep. When we were in the Airbnbs, I went back into the car. I recorded. Or if it was something that was like a, a rush audition, it was like, can we just pull over and pray the cats stay asleep right now? <laughs> and then one would be like, Meow. and I'm like, all right, I got to do it again. And then, that was my life in New York, okay. quite frankly. Uh, yeah. Not having, and that was the biggest inspiration for getting a room was in New York, it's so noisy and you're just at the mercy of whatever yeah. the beast wants. So if it's sirens <laughs> going by every yeah. Five minutes i'd have to turn off my fridge i'd have to put the cats in the room i'd have to like everything had to be in order like my girlfriend couldn't breathe or i would be like she's right on top of me right. so yeah. it was just like this is this is yeah. such a hard way to live and pursue this in new york mm -hmm. yeah. not that it's not right for everybody but you know it's it's just really difficult it's yeah. a tough place to live yeah well we have a lot of friends in new york and they're always you know they've they've adjusted they've been doing it for a long time yeah uh and they come and visit out here every now and again but yes. they go back yeah so anyway, once again, we're talking with Paul Castro Jr. If you've got a question for him, again, throw it in the chat room. If you're curious about what it's going to take to pick yourself up and move from wherever you are and come to L.A., he's the guy to ask. Well, you can ask me, too. Yeah. George, you've been out here for what? How long? 20 years? Well, gosh, uh, 2004, January. I, moved, so, I drove out the same time of year you did. Yeah. Had to get off the road in New Mexico, black ice, yeah. find a place in a hotel room at a Native American, hotel, you know, resort. Yeah. Sneak a dog into a hotel room. Yeah. I, I know. I know what you went through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're here. You found a, a really nice place yeah. in, in, in Lake Balboa, I guess, is technically what they call that neighborhood. Yes. And um, you, you moved in there. So now you're here. You want to pursue, obviously, voiceover, and, yep. and you're getting that work, and you're still doing the ongoing work with the clients you have, mm -hmm. but you also want to pursue the on-camera stuff. Have you been able to get anything since you since you dropped in? Well, the, the funniest thing is I got here, like, January 5th. I think January 9th, I found out I booked, like, a guest spot on a show in New York, and I had right. to fly back <laughs> right, right. within four days of yeah. being here. Oh, and I was like, oh, wow, this is very uh, serendipitous of yeah. saying New York's like, you think you're leaving? You're bringing yeah. you back. Yeah. And that's <laughs> so I flew back for like a week and a half for that. And um, you want a gig, you book a trip. Yeah, exactly. In this case, you were moving, but yeah, still, but <laughs> the whole thing still works. Back to the freezing cold, yeah. though. It was bitter cold yeah. when I went. And um, and then I have to do again another gig tomorrow. I'm flying back out. But um, I've been able to also pursue at the same time. But I do feel the strain that if it was way busier than it is now for me on camera wise, there would be, I think, a sacrifice or some sort of negotiation to be had to do voiceover at the rate at which it demands if you want yeah. to take it as seriously as you do. Like, yeah. it can be seven to ten auditions a day sometimes on a good like a good day and right. some of those are due that day and it's about you know taking care of your body and, and going to the gym and making sure you're eating and, and also doing good auditions because that's i think a lot of people 
they neglect that part because there's things that are due like, all right, two hours, get this promo in or something, and they don't mm -hmm. do the work on it, and they just get behind the mic, and they just read it, and it's like, all right, well, you're just throwing darts at the dartboard. Mechanically, just doing it. Yeah, yeah. and I, I totally, there's a lot of successful voice actors I've heard that are even on shows and doing animes or video games or anim like even cartoons. It's like they feel like sometimes they're phoning it in because they don't get to get the backstory or do the homework on it, and I totally get that because there's such a rush demand for this yeah. stuff. So you have to figure out ways to work at the quantity that your agents and the clients are asking you, but also feel like you're doing the work you want as a performer. Mm -hmm. and that's a hard negotiation sometimes. Right. And you're represented for voiceover and on camera from the same agency? Uh, yes. So my New York agents in New York are Stuart. They rep me on camera and commercial across the board. But in L.A. only, I'm with Dean Panero out here. Okay. So, and I, yeah, that's... That's got to be challenging. You know, they're, they're needing you to be on avail for something. and Yeah. Yeah. It's It's been tricky. It's been very tricky, just like scheduling-wise, like having to know. My manager has to be on top of knowing, like, all right, what are the book outdates for this? What Like, is it worth me even pursuing some things? Because they never want to be in a situation where, like, oh, Paul is not available um, because he's... And you're the guy who's not available. Yes. Right. And it looks they look bad right. to the, uh, the, the producers or right. the casting director. And mm -hmm. so... It's, that's just been something I'm, it's like, that's brand new for me. So I'm just yeah. figuring it out right now and yeah. the way to deal with it. So how do you think you're going to prioritize it? <sighs> I, is it, is it just simply what pays more or what's going to create the best opportunity or? It's tough. I think I want to do the on camera and there's a lot of people who do both successfully, but I would say that I've, as getting older and realizing you got a long way to go till you're older my friend yeah yeah, yeah. well uh gaining y levels at a, <laughs> at, a, at a rate uh i am realizing bills need to be paid and following the thing sometimes you get lucky and something says it, keep, it keeps answering and that was voiceover for me and as much as i wanted to be you know uh the next leonardo dicaprio at you know right. 24 i realized well voiceover is something i'm extremely passionate about I love it to death and it's paying my bills. It's something that people It's giving back to you. <laughs> it has. And it's yeah. it's very there's a it's a very select group of people that are successful in the business. And the thing I always say is that you have to be a way better actor to be a voice actor because if I go into mm. audition for something on camera, I'm going up against people who look like me or my age, they have a similar type. Right. As a voice actor, you're going up against the best of the best for these big profile things. So you're going up against the James Arnold Taylors, the Rob Paulsons, all these people. So you have to be that good right. to, to break through all the, the noise. Interesting. Right. Yeah, That's true. Years and years and years of experience yes. in this town, and they're like part of the, the, the fabric. Exa of exactly. And I heard you say manager. Yeah, when did the manager that. come into play for you? Getting management. So I guess that's a good thing to talk about is when I, I got started acting before I went to NYU, I had a, a like a youth manager and they're still, oh. I'm still considered a youth crazy yeah. enough, even though I'm creeping on 30, um, because I look like I'm, you know, early 18, 20s, 18, yeah. Yeah. college age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I had a, a, a youth, uh, manager and they do, and this is a great, I guess, uh, thing for anybody who's trying to pursue at a young age, um, voice acting is a lot of the commercial casting uh, or commercial agencies are sending out talent, even if you're not a voice actor, for the voice acting gigs because they just need actors at that young age. And no one's at, you know, 15 or 14, like, I want to be a voice actor largely. So everyone who's in a commercial agency is getting a lot of the times, at least it was for me in New York, getting all those voiceover breakdowns. Mm -hmm. So I had them right as I was getting into college. And then they've been with me since then, getting me with my agents when I was with Abrams for a long time. And then my agents moved to Stewart and I went with them. So um, they, but she's been very integral into like helping me figure out this whole thing and keeping it like in check for me. Um, yeah. Uh, Stephanie Artuso at Shirley Grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Outstanding. Once again, our guest is Paul Castro Jr. If you got a question, now's a really good time to ask it in our chat room. And Jeff Holman is standing by waiting for your questions, and uh, we'll get to those. So we're going to take a little break right now, and we'll get to your questions and more stuff with Paul right after these incredibly important messages. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Audiobook narration, ACX, Audible, rights holders, and success as a narrator. That's what you want, right? How about a free class on how to make that happen? Even better, how about three free classes on how to become a successful and happy audiobook narrator? It's about to happen, and all you need to do is let us know you're interested. Go to acxmasterclass.com to jump on the alert list for the upcoming 2020 training that they're offering. Absolutely free. That's acxmasterclass.com. The first class is Friday, January 17th, and they'll continue for the next week. To be able to watch these classes, just let us know you're interested. Visit acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back here on Voice Over Body Shop with Paul Castro Jr. We're talking about his trek from the East Coast out here to the Left Coast. and uh, West Coast, Best Coast. And well, in the winter, which is the best time to do it. Yes. It's, the contrast is so stark. You right. know, it's but if you want winter, you move up to Wrightwood. You yeah, know, where and, our and, friend Larry lives. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and you can still shovel snow up there if you want. I'm good. Down the street. <laughs> I, I have not done that since I moved here from Buffalo four and a half years ago. But maybe maybe this winter I'll get up there and just go. Well, Larry, oh, yeah. well, Larry, you can pay Larry to go shovel his snow for him. That's true. <laughs> yeah. It's an attraction. Yeah. It's true. I've seen it on Facebook. <laughs> The little bobsled run up there, <laughs> yeah. be fun. Uh, so, you've got your, your you've got a very young voice, unlike some of us old geese, you know, geezers. Uh, how do you brand yourself? I mean, you, how did you do it in New York? And are you trying to apply the same sort of branding here? Or have you changed the strategy at all? A little bit, I think. Um, I still am very aware, and I think everybody needs to know what their brand is, and figuring that out can be probably the most. Uh, beneficial thing to you in your career because you got to know your own voice and you have to know how how to differentiate yourself because that's the only thing that's unique to you is the thing that you were given and the thing that you should learn to harness and become the best at because everybody nowadays is trying to become the person of a thousand voices or an right. impressionist and do their... work that way yeah and mm -hmm. the even i remember i i sat down with uh my agent and uh, dean he was like there's so much money to be made with just your voice let's work on that first and not that mm -hmm. i don't do different character voices but 
I often feel that there's a lot of times when people are casting these specs, they don't really know what they want just yet. And I feel like why not give them the best thing if it's within the parameters? I mean, right. to give them what's unique to you and color it with the different you know circumstances, um, do the acting work. So give them what's unique to you and they'll probably be like, oh, that was really good and I've never heard that before. Let's try that. Because so often there's an oversaturation of the same type of voices and the same voice actors. People want difference. Right. So why not just start with what you've been God given? Um, your question was branding though, right? Yes. Okay. So, but, but you're, you're getting there. Yeah, yes. <laughs> but branding wise, I just knew that I had this young, I mean, the way I walked into the room, kind of how I'm, I'm dressed in my haircut was this young, energetic, a lot of, uh, 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 skateboard type style <laughs> punk thing. So I was working a lot with Nickelodeon on those high energetic things where it was like, next time on Nick. And I was like, oh, wait a second. That's something I can capitalize on branding wise. And all these younger things, instead of trying to do the older, um, like young dad, 25 year old, uh, where there's a ton of work, mind you. But I said, I knew I'm going to get more of my return on my investments if I target those younger Gen Y targeted uh brands in terms of commercials right and even uh, uh animation wise not that i don't go out for the 25 to 35 or even 40 sometimes stuff but i just know it's like i have to do what's best for me instead of trying to put on the dad voice it's like it's, there's just no point <laughs> in doing that happen, yeah man. i do what's w the my interpretation of that maybe i and it's more about performance with cadence and intonation and the how who i'm talking to rather than trying to put on something that i'm not the the good people who can do that they're doing it for a reason and they still are um james arnold taylor is very good at what he does and there's a reason why he can do everything he can do everything yeah and i've seen him do it all in one sentence which is Pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, are you taking any? Are you taking any classes? Have you signed up for any classes? Working with anybody out here? And because uh, I know a lot of people say you got to keep studying. Yes. To make yourself competitive. I yes. So I haven't. Ta I've been taking actually. I've been focusing more on business stuff. I just did a, a like a consultation with uh, Maria Pendolino. Mm -hmm. So just a bu nice buffalo gal. By yes, way. exactly. <laughs> so really, for me at this point, just transitioning is maximizing my marketing and. Uh, ways to attract more clients so that I can make use of my investment on my home studio, like figuring out the best way to get to that next pay gap because I'm making money, but it's about now building upon that. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of business focused things. That's been my target, but taking classes and meeting with people and networking is it's on the priority list. And I already know people I want to train with and like Richard Horowitz, I'd love to, you know, uh, maybe take a class with him. It's just about, priority pri the, the, not enough hours in the day at this point just right. yet because i'm still like getting furniture <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you got you got to take care of those things yes but you know if somebody's going to hire you to do something you're going to get a chance to work with somebody yes that couch can wait you can still sit on the floor if yes you need to. yes um, mick winger mm -hmm. is another person who i've oh, already yeah. talked to you about doing uh work with you know these are people that are uh, successful voice actors who i know that I want to work with. But I do think that there is um, a culture that is done not just, probably less in the voice acting world, more on camera, where people become like professional students in a way. And not that you shouldn't always be learning, but mm. you have to learn to n utilize both. Like know when the classes are right for you and not that you shouldn't stop training, but also pursuing the uh, financial return or figuring out ways to market yourself and investing in those things yeah. rather than just always being in the class. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we yeah. got a couple of questions from our vast audience, which, by the way, is worldwide. They're watching in Australia. They're watching in Switzerland. They're asleep there, but they're still watching. <laughs> uh, and if you've got a question, again, throw it in the Facebook chat room and we'll get it right to Paul in just a minute. Uh, who do we have there, Mr. Whittem? Let's go back and look at the right questions. Here there we go. go. Um, Thomas Machen says, you were, uh, you were hit with sticker shock with the move. Were you hit with Were you hit it? Yeah. Were you hit it with it? Um, in terms were you of... Were prepared? Were you prepared for what it was going to cost you? And I was... Was it okay? So I, I was and I wasn't because I had friends who'd done the move already and I'd yeah. seen them come back just as soon as they got here. And I knew that financially I had to have my money, like I said, in order, and then 
buying a car was a whole process in itself. And you're changing your expenses from the Metro rides to insurance and the car payment and all that other have stuff. Have you registered your car in California yet? Not yet. That's the, <laughs> see, like I still have those things to do. I did do my TSA pre-check thing though. So now going back and forth will be less great, of a hassle. Uh, but that's still on the list. Transferring over my insurance, which I haven't done yet and all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I'll get to it. If I get pulled over, I'll, you know, you'll be right. I'll deal with I that. I waited thing. a year. Oh, <laughs> is it like a month? Are you supposed to do a month? Yeah. yeah. So we'll see how. Just don't get caught. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I took those three years and I didn't go as much as I wanted to go last year. I was so ready. I just knew that it didn't make sense. And my mental health was definitely being affected because me and my girlfriend would always just say, I can't wait to move. I can't wait to move. That was like the majority of our conversations. I can't wait till we get past this point of like, we're stuck in limbo kind of. So I, I, we wanted it so bad. We did what we had to do. We did the hard work. We put in time with our families. We, we made sure we worked really hard to get our finances in order and we wouldn't have done it if we didn't have the, the means to do it. And right. I wouldn't recommend people do it if they, yeah. if they don't, or, and, and examples I mean by that, I came out here two weeks earlier. I stayed with a friend of mine and I, I saved money on terms of, you know, getting a hotel and Airbnb, right. whatever that was figuring out ways. Cause it, I guarantee you so many people know people in LA. Mm -hmm. And if you've never been here, stay with somebody who, you know, and see how you like it first. Cause so many, it's, it may not be for everybody. It's different. Yes. <laughs> it's vastly different. Um, yeah. But for me, animation-wise, video games, all that stuff, it was so high on my priority list. Um, it, it was just a no-brainer. Yeah. What's her... Is your girlfriend in the biz? Yeah, she's an actress and writer. She's okay. working on a novel right now. So it's um, two careers you were... Yeah, yeah that were, was a negotiation, too. Yeah, um, <laughs> two careers you're messing with. Yeah, yeah. But And I'll tell you what, though, because I had her, I don't think if we... If I didn't have her, I don't think I could have done it. Mm. Uh, yeah, you have to have support. There's yeah. no question about it. Yeah, absolutely. You do it by yourself, and you're you're really like Scared. reaching in the dark. It's yeah. good to have an extra pair of hands to feel around yeah. and see what's and going feed on. the four cats too. That's helpful. <laughs> 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 Leave them out food, I thought. You know, like, yeah. They'll eventually eat it. Well, they'll eat me sooner than they'll eat the dry food. <laughs> That's right. So, like, <laughs> don't, don't die at your place. Yeah. <laughs> Nasty. This, <laughs> really. this thing's got maudlin really fast. Yeah. Um, Rob Ryder says, question for Paul. Are you getting all your auditions from your agents or some other avenues? So is it all traditionally agents? Mostly it's Asking. agents. I've been lucky and return people I've worked with. Um, just talking with Marie and uh, recently... I've been looking at like things like voice one, two, three and ways of seeing uh, how I can apply them with a paymaster if there are jobs that come through to apply for my health and pension because that's the next really difficult uh, adult thing that you start dealing with as you start making this a full-time career is how am I going to get my health insurance and making those pension points and all those things. So um, really figuring out ways I can because there's so much work that is non-union right now it is there's so much um and there's a lot of work for sag after to do to start figuring out ways to bring more work to people um there's reasons why these pay to plays and other avenues exist and have a place within the market because people need to pay their bills so i've been very fortunate i've had people i've worked with uh recurring and that's not common for a lot of people who are trying to get into mm. this business as far as i'm concerned to get right. clients that are repeat clients um and that's i think the biggest goal for me and i think for people is figuring out ways to nurture relationships that you make because if you can get a return client that can be something that pays your bills for a whole year if you're working consistently right. with them have you been doing any industrial work uh like e-learning and because some of the stuff that is really like the basis for a lot of people's business is not doing national flight commercials and things yeah. like that they have a constant flow of of business type work have you tried any of that that's so i haven't that's i've been doing mostly promo commercial and animation but now tr realizing that i'm making this more of my full-time life that's the things i'm looking at to start getting into that next pay gap that i want the the mm -hmm. next milestone financially because there's that's there's so much money and work to be had there but then the question becomes um are you going to do that through uh, your paymaster, or are you going to consider going FICOR? Um, you know, what is the uh, the mm. contract you're dealing with with those jobs? So yeah. there's a lot of questions to 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 
you have to figure out what you want. And for me, knowing that I want to do a lot of on-camera stuff, and there's a lot of, I think, taboo-ness around Ficor, but it's a very uh, realistic option for a lot of people who want to do everything and have the freedom uh, to do it while also doing union stuff. Because um, there's just so much non-union work right now. Um, do I hope that that's the case going forward? I hope not, and that's why I have not done that yet. Oh. Where do you go when you want to get advice on that kind of stuff? Is that your manager or? My manager and like people like uh, uh, Maria and uh, just uh, like, you know, different uh, podcasts, I think, yeah. you know, between you guys and VO Buzz and there's VO Boss. There's a lot of stuff, but a lot yeah. of it too is just, I've done a, a really large amount of homework in terms of my networking. So I knew when I was coming out here, meet as many people that I have some sort of like, uh, Kevin Bacon list separation right. to yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, degrees it's of separation. It's, not, it's not six, that's for sure. Yeah, so finding people, and I've been very lucky to to speak with people who are doing this at a, the highest level because I did my diligence of reaching out to people. And that's the best thing about the voiceover business, different than the on-camera business, is the people are so amazing and uh, bright and helpful and they want to be supportive of new talent, let's say. If you know you tried to reach out to an on-camera person, there's probably a, a much difficult, more difficult way to even get in touch with that person. Oh yeah. Many yeah. voice actors, you can go to their website and just click contact and say, right. "Hey, I know so and so. I'm good friends. Like, I would yeah. move to LA. Would love to buy you lunch uh, or whatever. And just nurture a relationship that way because yeah. Yeah. never it's say it's pick your brain. It's safer your to brain. be a voice actor, right? It's safer. <laughs> it is. It, it, quite frankly, it's more it is. Private. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Abigail Let's Wall. See. Oh, an old, apparently, hey! a fan or friend. Or very good friends. Fan. Yes, and Family. very uh, uh, talented voice actress. Yes. Uh, what's your typical day like? It probably varies from week to week, but what time do you wake up and go to sleep? <sighs> Miss you in New York City. Miss you too, Abby. <laughs> um, right now, it's been different because I'm. It's either I'm still on New York time. Yeah, you're uh, flipping, flapping, jet lag before. wise. But uh, I would say I'm getting up at five thirty right now. I'm getting to the gym by six, and I'm getting home by seven, and then that's like shower seven thirty. I'm in the room recording whatever it is I have to do. I'm doing my homework on things. Like I literally spent all day today, this morning, just working on a Boston accent for something I'm doing. And that's like, that's one of those things where there's those you just small... watch the Super Bowl ad, man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. You just, just 30 seconds. Yeah. 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 You learn it in 30 Smart seconds. Smart you're done. Yeah, so, you know, do, being <laughs> being authentic, like doing things like that, which I have the skills to do, but knowing that there's certain intricacies in the uh the accent that you can make a mistake and someone's gonna know if they're a native between doing an impression versus like exactly being the guy and being able to do it from a relaxed state that takes yeah. work for me to do i don't want to just throw garbage out there right. so I, I spent a lot of time doing that but pretty much from 7 30 to like 12 30 i'm doing preps and auditions i'll get lunch at that point and then it's usually another influx of things coming in so i try to stop working at like four at this point now then decompress get food and then it usually does happen where something will come in later and i'm back in the booth at like eight or nine o'clock and i'm trying to be in bed by 10 um and then everything else that comes in with life too, like I said, <laughs> driving around LA on Facebook Marketplace, getting different furniture is still part of it and uh, doing on-camera auditions and business stuff. I'm trying to dedicate at least an hour within the day to just focus on my marketing and my business mm -hmm. um, and giving myself that homework to say, do outreach, do marketing, connect with people on LinkedIn. Um, I recommend offer up too. Offer up. Oh, that's another pretty, like pretty marketplace. Hot, yeah. yeah. In LA, yeah. So yeah, but all these <laughs> other different things that uh, go into running a business because people think that when you're a voice actor, that's all you do. But you're running a business. You're the CEO of. Excellent point. Of your own you business. Are. Yeah. Now, you're you're a successful actor, but you understand that. You're an entrepreneur. You're entering Absolutely. an entrepreneurial pursuit. Yes, yeah. And that's not something anybody teaches you in acting school. And that's, I've yeah. I've gone back to like my alma mater and, and I've talked with students about that and just talking about getting a website and, and doing your diligence mm -hmm. to get your, your reel and how to connect with managers and about taking classes or going to the grad schools and working with students. And that's ways that you can build your relationships and portfolio. And I remember talking with the whole... Uh, uh, class of like uh, first years at, at uh, acting school and they were all like 
uh, I feel very overwhelmed right now. And I'm like, well, that's because this needs to be a class. There needs right. to be business, the uh, the business of acting. Mm. Um, because remember, it's show business. It's show, and there's no business yeah. like show business. Yes. Question from Wes. Uh, hey, Paul, how do you feel about recording in different locations, like not in your studio? Do you prefer really only recording in your own personal setup? or? You know what? That's it's a good question. Uh, I love recording in my own studio, and I think that's something that a lot of people who've been doing this for a while they always really love uh, being on site. I love doing like prelay with a group of actors uh, on a an animated project. I think that's the most rewarding experience you'll get. Prelay is before they production. Even starts at all yes you're is doing the, the voices. table read no that's no. like when you're doing the um the the voices and then to just the scripts and then they'll animate towards the the voices oh okay so okay. uh doing that for a show has been the most rewarding but uh auditioning wise i love doing home records so much better because i just know at my age the people i'm going against aren't gonna have nearly the quality that i'm putting out there they're not gonna have nearly the skill and that's where i am so much more beneficial because my stuff sounds top quality mm. and it sounds like to them right. probably I'm, I'm i'm trying to bring in 15 or 16 year olds why does this guy sound like he's going to the studio every day to record I'm like well that's right. my bedroom <laughs> exactly well we're actually looking at your studio if you turn a little bit ah. we can actually see what your studio looks like turn yes. turn 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 this way there you go you, <laughs> you can actually see what you've got set up there. yes yeah. so it's i've got good. i've got my 416 and a akg uh c414 the yeah. xl2 i know there's like the different versions of them. it's a microphone for yes the and that's not the important part and i've got my i mirror my daw uh i use adobe audition and then my sides are here and that's pretty much how i do it and i i haven't i've done it a couple of times i know we talked about this when we set it up the place having the two microphones has been increased my workflow uh tremendously because if i'm doing something that has a lot of efforts or screams i'll just run multi-track put one gained for my efforts and shouts and the other one gained for um just normal uh speaking voice uh -huh. and so i'm um, it's like an animation trick yeah I which has been something studio. i've never heard anyone do i was just like i have yeah. two good microphones why don't i do that yeah cool yeah. have you had any success getting getting into animation or anime or some of the things that you you want to try and get out here in la yeah i've already been go i've had already callbacks for fairly large things and i'm going out for uh a large majority of the the big high profile stuff that's you know the netflix shows the right. cartoon network stuff and again it's like there's definitely going to be a period where um uh, again like abigail wall we took a class with andrea toyas who does mm -hmm. blizzard entertainment we've had her on the show and she's an amazing yeah. uh so talented and so giving as a, as a person her class is phenomenal you should take it uh if she's going to be in your area um just like the realistic logistics of people especially younger talent if you're not here it's hard for you to work on the things that are here so as much as you might want to do blizzard from uh new york or wherever you might be it's gonna be a you it's gonna have to be so specific and at the end of the day you'll probably have to fly here on your own dime anyway so it for uh, as a, a a production company or agency or casting office they're not going to waste their time with people who aren't here already i literally read a spec sheet today or yesterday that said prefer la first but will consider other areas if they are that good so that was a huge influence for wow. me for me moving and yeah. um you know i'm That's at a this common question we get on this show really really common because our audience is everywhere yeah yeah There's every show almost somebody asks that question do i have to be in la yeah. to book this stuff and it's like not a have to but if you want to increase your odds dramatically mm -hmm probably need to be here yeah yeah and if you've been here for a while and you've been established you can actually move away if yeah that's true you know if if, yeah. if, if you've put got your, the facility to do it put your yeah. ears in yeah and half of these casting directors here in la don't even know me because they're not sending they weren't sending those breakdowns i think that's changing a little bit now i think that there's a lot of new york agencies like my new york agency was doing their diligence to make relationships in la but a lot of people um or a lot of agencies in new york don't have that connection the the casting offices don't really want to have new york talent come in for a majority of things because it creates a headache especially for younger talent so like uh, if i'm going in for dreamworks type of things their assumption is i'm somewhere between 14 to 21 years old that whole logistics of getting me from wherever i am to there to work for one day 
that's just a headache they don't want to to deal yeah. with i assume um so just meeting the new casting directors here that i've never been in for is expanding my my market um and i'm going in for a lot more than i ever did in new york yeah uh kind of a couple minutes here what would be your like standard advice to people who are trying to decide whether they want to come out here if you're if you just want to come out here to be an actor and you don't have a whole lot of experience, this is not the place for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. No, I would say get into an acting class wherever you are. Get really, 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 really good. I mean, the amount of time I've spent in my closet when I was in New York just working on copy, like making my own demos, let's say, but never doing anything with them. It was just the practice of learning how to become your own engineer, right. learning how to like hearing the difference between different reads and learning to talk to actual people when you're acting and not just saying words. Um, Cause you know, when you're in the booth, a lot of things are taken away from you. You don't have the props in front of you, the other actors to work off of. You have to really create that environment yourself, almost like green screen acting in a way. Um, so I would say getting classes, get really, really good. See if you can establish work in the market that you're in. I, I'm so glad I got to make so many mistakes in New York doing like uh, dubbing in New York on the you know small projects that I did and working on the promos and the commercials and now going in for animations where now you're building like a, a personality career where people are going to you know want to eventually at some point you know uh, go to see you at a convention or something if that's the career you're pursuing. You have the chops now. It's take. I've been doing this, like really doing this, I would say eight years. And the first years I probably took for granted in voiceover. But I'm just now feeling like, okay, I can start. It wasn't like I just woke up the next day and I just <laughs> was, I, I, I felt like I can do this. Yeah. Um, I wanted to harness being a good actor and that's the the top priority. Get your, get your money straight um, and see if you can visit and just see if you like this area. But... Anywhere you are, you're going to have to be content with like working from the ground up, let's say. So if you're in New York, living with roommates, figuring out that dynamic. If you're just starting out moving to L.A., living with roommates or figuring out a way to uh, to survive, live frugal and um, just stretch your dollars very, very, very far. <laughs> yeah. Facebook Marketplace has been great. New couches for 200 bucks. Yeah. Or not new, but, you know, they Very look nice new. Couches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What eventually happens, you'll find in this neighborhood, is someone will leave one on the front lawn. That too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you can just, like, oh, okay. We've in we've exchanged entire, you know, furniture sets and entire rooms, but, hey, that desk would work great in Jacob's room. So Perfect. You, you know, and then put ours out, and then someone takes that. It's like, like a lending library. Yeah. You know, it's kind of interesting. Uh, got one last question here from Thomas Machen. Uh, do you prefer directed sessions or directing yourself? Self-direction, a really mm, tough thing to do. It is. It's very tough. I think because I've done, I've produced films and I've directed films, I know how to, and I even doing self-tapes with my friends, I think I'm good at directing. And so hearing myself back, I know if something is... Uh, fulfilling the job in terms of the story. Mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, I'm hitting that beat. I'm hitting that joke. I, I feel like I am a decent self-director, but I did, I was doing self-direction on a project that I'm doing in New York still. And then they had me, because I was still setting up my studio here, they had me go to a, an LA studio to, to do work. And I was working with a director here. And just even like on one note, he had me do things. I'm like, I wouldn't have thought of that. Right. I wouldn't have thought of that. It was just being removed definitely gives you the freedom or somebody else the freedom to see things from a different angle. So I probably, I like working in my own booth because I get to be in my underwear if I want to and do my my job. But if I'm working in a studio with somebody else, I think that there's that the collaboration I love too. I think you'll get a better product at the end of the day. No question. Paul, thank you so much oh, for my joining pleasure. us. Great thank to you. have you out this here. Fun. This yes, fun. thank, thank you. you. Feel free to come by anytime. Yes, you guys have given me a wealth of knowledge. I was watching this show, and I would say do that. Watch all the podcast information that you can that these guys have because it has helped me uh, so much. I mean, my studio is a product of his help. I was literally recording even in the wrong direction. But we figured that one out. Yeah. All righty. Paul Castro, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thanks for being with us. All right. George and I will be right back to wrap things up into a nice, tight little ball right after this. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching 
voice. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Hey, you know what this thing is? This is a Harlan Hogan Portabooth Plus, and this is the carry bag that it comes in. You know, spring break is coming up, and if you're going to be on the road, you're going to want to have one of these to make sure that you can record nice and quiet and with no echo on the road. And right now, our viewers can save $10 on the Portabooth Plus travel bag and $5 on their three-way adjustable desktop stand. Both exclusive VoiceOver Essential exclusive products. Spring break is coming up, so make sure you have one of these. This is a must-have for your traveling studio. Thanks, VoiceOver Essentials and Harlan Hogan, for being our sponsor for almost nine years. Go get one of these babies. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Elements. You know who they are, the creators of Source Connect, that tool that you don't have what you don't have it you should have it it's that tool that allows you to connect your studio to other studios around the world so they can record you from your booth uh, it's a tool you should have because even if you're not being asked for it now you might be asked for it tomorrow or in a month or in a year you want to have it ready to go and know how to use it it's really the heir apparent to isdn technology and it is definitely what the pros are using you can go ahead and sign up for a 15-day free trial of Source Connect over at sourceelements.com. Get it up and running. Get your iLock account in order. There's a little video on there. I'll teach you how to do it by yours truly. And it'll help you get up and running so you can understand how it all works. Then that day that you get the gig, you can activate the license. It's a no-brainer. Give it a try. Thanks for your support, Source Elements. And we'll see you right after this break. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. And we're back to say goodbye, primarily. But we have lots of people to, to thank. But most most importantly, uh, we need to thank people who have been contributing financially to the success of this show. No more every week it's Apollo 13. It's rock solid because of you kids. Even with Larry here. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, um, some of the names, these are definitely familiar names for the most part. So many people uh, repeatedly subscribe, I guess, on PayPal. Um, Christy Burns, Michael Kearns, Mike Gordon, Harlo Rodriguez, 949 Designs. That's that Lee Penny guy, by the way. Oh, that's who that is. Yes. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Lee. <laughs> uh, Martha Kahn, our friend, and Shauna Pennington Baird. Thank you, everyone, for those little helps to our expenses. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Uh, also, get on our mailing list so you know what's coming up. I'm sure a lot of you get the uh, the email right before the show so you know who's going to be on, that you got to ask your questions, and that, you know, you get out of this show what you put into it, mm -hmm. like the people who ask questions tonight. Which or is... the people that suggest guests to us as well. Exactly. That's also valuable. Always a big help. And the name place. of their agent and their email address. That's right. Uh, and their phone number, <laughs> yeah. if you happen to have it. And their address. Uh, right. Uh, hey, show us your booths. Now, this this tonight. is this happens to be Paul Castro's booth, but, uh, but you can see it's perfectly laid out. And we want to see what your booth looks like. It'd be like 
George and I would be in your studio. What what could the greatest thing you could Isn't ever see? Fun, yeah. Look how fun this is. I love it when people like put our logo on their screen, and we're like, oh. Okay. And now, thanks to like everybody watching on like little screens, sometimes they don't even know this is fake. That's right. <laughs> it's, actually, it you know, is. I've actually heard I people we say, there. "How did did you?" No, it's green screen. It's what? Green screen. Well, yeah. that's right. Uh, let's see here. You want to be in our studio? We got people in the studio tonight, by the way. We got Trust a, us. There's the camera. Hey, 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 hey the wave, everybody. <laughs> oh, okay. It's kind of frozen. Uh, All right. <laughs> but it's great to be here live. It makes the show a little bit more interesting. Yeah. And you get to see how we do it. It's and if I know you, I, get to, I might get to make crack jokes about you. That's right. Like Larry. That's right. All right. Uh, we need to thank our amazing sponsors, like uh, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. And, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Podcasting and Webcasting. Jeff Holman, right here in person in the flush, helping us with the chat room. All Thanks, right. Jeff. Doing an excellent job first yeah. time out. Awesome. Yeah, jump right into it. Mm -hmm. And, of course, our amazing technical director, Sue Merlino, who gets it done week after week after week. Say something, Sue. I hooked up your microphone. You ready? Hey, Three, two, great. one. Hey, great to be here. Okay. <laughs> that was your big moment. Bad so, mic technique. All I can hear myself <clears throat> on delay, so right. it's a weird acid trip. Oh, it's trip. pretty awful, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All righty. <laughs> Well, look, as you know, this is not an easy business. Just look at what Paul Castro Jr. was telling us this evening. There's a lot of things you got to consider. and uh, But we're here to help, uh, give you advice, talk to the people who are doing it. Which the is, people that guest on this show, for one. Exactly. That's what I meant. And uh, so keep here every week. We bring you fresh content every week here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So make sure you're by, all right? Make sure you drop by and see what we're doing. And listen to what George and I say, because if it sounds good, it is good. All righty. Well, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widom. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Wow. Have a great week, everybody. Right, we'll be. Tech talk coming up. Yeah, get your questions in right now.